Welcome back to another episode of Buzzer Heaters. We're college kids and we give our college takes. You watch The Herd, Colin Coward, he doesn't do interviews like this. This is our job. We are college kids giving our takes from the social media era. And today, we have a very special guest. Very special. Sean Latham. Sean, I'm going to introduce you really quick. Thank you so much for coming on our show. For those who don't know him, he, was, he is a stand-up comedian appeared in a film, I'm Not Like That No More, in 2009, went on two tours with Gabriel Iglesias, featured on Stand Up and Deliver in 2013, was on Comedy Central's Stand Up Revolution, now the host of $20 Chef, presented by Barstool Sports, and most importantly, most importantly. an amateur boxer. Yes. We saw, um, we're going to get into that later, but that is sick. That is sick. Don't forget, I'm, uh, I'm also a, like, I'm like a AAA professional corridor player as well. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. don't worry. We'll get into that. Hey, hey, thanks for that sweet intro. I I forgot about all that stuff, man. I feel good again. <laughs> happens. It, I mean, it happens these days. Definitely. You know what I mean? So, first question I want to ask you. I'm just going to break the seal on the interview. First question, your beard. It captivates all of us. We want to know, first off, why that choice of the beard look? Why not the full thing? Um, I don't know. You know, I, I was, um, when I first started growing it out, like in my early 30s, I had all of it here, and then I shaved off the mustache. Like, I was just trying to pull some Wolverine shit off. Yeah. And remember, he had his partner, too, the other guy that plays uh, Ray, Ray Donovan in the, one of the original Wolverines. Yeah. Well, he had the opposite. He had the chin thing going. So I was like, ah, oh, that looks fucking cool. Yeah. So I just started doing it because I was like, I, you know, I just want to look a little bit different in some way. Of course. And I used to shave it all the way, like, just have the chops, and I used to go all the way down. <laughs> Mud chops. Yes, so, sir. Love the chops. I don't know. You know, at this point, I love it. I just leave it at this point, like, just so everybody, like all the haters that are like, what's this fucking dude shave his chin for? <laughs> like, because I can, bro. I don't give a Don't let the haters get you, honestly. Yeah, I know, but it's just funny, like, because I've never, like, I've uh, never wanted to express my concern for another man's facial hair, like, in a weird way, like, where it affects me. Like, oh, if I'm talking to somebody, we start talking about facial hair, but, you know, like, this is casual and normal, but, like, to actually be offended or, for it to bug me, I'm like, I don't give a shit what people do with their face, man. Do what you yeah, want to do, bro. Exactly. Bro, your body, your choice. Your body. Yeah, dude. <laughs> exactly. My body, my choice. So we're going to start off, uh, basic question. How did you break through in the comedy world? Like, how did, how did your career just start? Um, I got a job at the Improv Comedy okay. Club when I was a food runner when I was like 22 or 23. Wow. Where is that? I think I was 20, 22 for sure. And then I just, I had done stand-up once at an open mic, like, being you know peer pressured by friends and then uh and then i got after that that was it i did it the one time and then uh like a year or two later i got a job at the improv and i started watching it every weekend and i got to see like the most amazing people in 2001 yeah you know like so many people that aren't even here anymore like you know uh ralphie may mitch hedberg All right. um you know uh there's i mean there's richard schimmel there's like there's so – John Panette. There's just so many amazing comedians. I got to watch four nights a week. You know, do I watch them do eight shows, ten shows. And then the next week, another amazing person. And the next week, another amazing person. And then – so those three people at the improv that worked there that also did stand-up, and I started hanging out with them. Yeah. And I just started doing open mics and shit with them, man. And I just got – I just really dug it. That is nice. And that is cool. And obviously, we mentioned in the intro – you went on tour with Gabriel Iglesias, Mr. Fluffy. Mr. I mean, Fluffy. Yeah. we've seen his work – one of the funniest guys the I've funniest. ever seen ever. How did he find you? How'd you guys meet? How'd that whole thing come about? Um, yeah, I started, I was already 10 years almost in stand up when I started working with him. Um, but I, I knew him because he used to tour the Tempe improv. So his t-shirt manager got homie, you know, he had like a homie that is still one of my best friends in his days. His name's Quaylar. Well, Quaylar was, um, did merch and like, you know, travel, travel, you know, coordinating for Gabriel. And we smoked weed together when he came to the improv. We'd hang out. I mean, and then when I moved to L.A., LA yeah. uh, I moved to L.A. in oh, at the, the December of 2004. And this fool would start hanging out. And, like, eventually, like, in 2008, I'd come, he'd call me to come hang out at Gabriel's show. Like, he'd be headlining the Irvine Improv. So I'd come hang out. And, you know, I'd be hanging out with Gabriel and shit in the green room. And, they, and, then, uh, and then one day he's like, hey, you want to do five minutes? And I was like, hey, yeah, bro, I'll do five yeah. minutes. Yeah. So, you know, it just kind of slowly started like that. And then in 2010, he asked me to, a couple years later, he asked me to go on the road with him. And then so, I, was, uh, I was on the road with him for about five years. 
Yeah, that's so dope. So how was it like traveling on the road and like, what was it like, like being with him, oh, like hey. going, like traveling the country, like doing your thing? Yeah, like, I do the dream a little bit. The, no, that guy, he's the man, bro. He's super, he's extremely uh, uh, generous. You know, you know, he also makes you work for it. So he teaches, he doesn't just like give you like, here you go. He just didn't hand it over, you know? Right. I had to work a lot. I, had, you know, I helped with t-shirts for a while in the beginning. I had to kind of like swallow my pride because I had already been doing comedy for 10 years, you know? And I was like, well, I don't have any other opportunities. This guy's really giving me a shot here. And he had a big heart. So I only did shirts for a little while. I mean, I did it, but he always put me on stage for the first year. And then, yeah, so for the first year, it was back and forth. But, man, I wasn't making that much money because he was, like, you know, teaching me a good lesson. Right. But I didn't have to pay. I still saved up more money than I ever had in my life because – I didn't pay for anything ever. Like I didn't pay for any flights. You don't pay for a bag. You don't pay for food. You don't pay for anything, dude. When you go out, to, when you go out, it's all paid for. You drink for free because at in the green room at every every single show, there's a bottle of you know vodka or whiskey and beers. You just you hooked so, up right there. Yeah, dude. I saved up <laughs> so much money. I didn't make very much, and and I just got to have a blast, bro. We just cruised right. around, had a fucking. Hanging out on a tour bus, you know, I, I went to, I've been with him to uh, 49 states. Wow. We toured. I've been to six countries in Europe. Also, I went with him to Amman, Jordan. Okay. So he took me all, you know, he took, I went to Hawaii five times. Jesus. It was crazy. the man, bro. He's just the man. He just had, he just had your, he had my back. Yeah, of course. So uh, we're going to go off of that. And obviously later in your career, you started $20 Chef. How did that start? Like, what was your, like, you just ran with an idea? Like, how'd that happen? Well, I started cooking a lot in my 30s. And then, you know, I was just like, you know, you're broke as shit. You have to, like, make a decision, you know? Yeah. So once you just, once you, like, get to a point where you can't eat out every day, like, it's physically not, it's just not financially a possibility. Of course. Like, you, unless you're eating, like, a $1 sandwich, if you get to a certain point in your life where, like, $500 in your bank accounts is shitload, then uh, you can't be eating out all the time, right, ever. So you have to start cooking. And then you have to decide, once you start cooking, are you going to just eat shit, like, just the easiest, dumbest shit? Or are you going to, like, get creative with it? And just, like, because it's kind of like a drawing if you're little or painting or any kind of talent, right, doing a podcast, you know? Of course. So I just started enjoying it. And then I always worked at restaurants growing up. So I had a pretty, you know, I, have a, I, I always worked at bartender, food runner, you know, bar back, waiter, and then, uh, you know, I just started wanting to eat better. And I, this restaurant I worked at, every they only, they were, it was called Dining in the, it was a nightclub in the front, but it was a, in the back of the room was a, a thing called Dining in the Dark. It was ran by a blind guy. Oh, wow. So you set, a, you set an appointment, right? I mean, a, a reservation. Yeah. You only pick meat, fish, or beef. Okay. I'm sorry, chicken, steak, or, beef, or uh, fish. Yeah. And then they walk you in, you know, this gentleman walks you in, you and your date sit there in the dark, and you eat. And it's like this experience about, you know, like relying on your taste buds and shit, right? Wow. And you smell. Okay. And then, but on Sunday nights, they'd always have extra fish left over. Yeah. So I'd take home like five pounds of, you know, ahi tuna and shit. And then we started cooking that at my house. And I had a roommate, and he liked to cook. So I had roommates too that always threw some shit in the mix, right? Of course, yeah. So I'd learn from them, and we'd eat that, and we'd learn together, and then we'd learn another guy. And then once I uh, moved to Indiana, I started – I was just doing shit on my Snapchat, like just cooking and talking shit while I cooked. Yeah. I mean, and then it just – and that's when I started working with you. Yeah. What's yeah, that? I, yeah. No, oh, yeah. We're college students also, so, like, we can yeah. attest to not having any fucking money. Yeah. Yeah. And not knowing what to do for food, honestly. I think I had Chipotle a hundred times when I was in school. Like, in yeah, school. You, you guys took your Chipotle money and you, like – you know, it's 10 bucks every time you go minimum. Oh, right. But if, you know, if three of you put in 10 bucks and you went to the store, you yeah. know, and then you bought yeah. shit and you actually cooked it and you were drinking while you did it, you know, so it's still like you're hanging out and you're not just doing something to survive, you know, it's something fun, you know. Then you yeah. can, you'll get a lot longer because that's going to be at least two meals for you, at least, because there's going to be more left over. If you buy a bag of fish sticks or some shit and a bag of fries, and then you buy the shit to make, or you buy some tartar sauce or whatever you want, and a lemon, that's going to go way farther. It takes a little bit more effort than going to Chipotle, but you'll have more left over. That's the whole point of the show. You know, like, I'm not – there's – you know, the other chefs at work are better than me. Like, 
Too large and Chef Donnie are much better cooks, but I'm funny as fuck. So <laughs> exactly, you know, it's, yeah, it's entertainment. I'm, I'm not Gordon Ramsay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I never thought. Gordon Ramsay does was. follow you though. Well, I, I can guarantee you that was probably somebody on his, his marketing team because he don't know what the fuck <laughs> I am. All right, all right. So obviously, you're doing very successful right now. But twenty hour chef is that like your long term career goal, or like what's next for you? Agreed. No, I, I mean, I, I just pitched another pilot for another show. Um, kind of like, it's, uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's going to go yet. I don't know if it's going to get picked up or not. It has to see if it sells ads. You know, that's all that matters at Barstool is, yeah. for me personally, is creating content they sell to advertisers. That's all that matters. Right. That's how, your, that's how your salary gets paid, you know, um, and determined. Um, but, I, no, you know what, honestly, I, I got a lot. I love cooking, and I'm, I mean, I've kind of moved into outdoors cooking because – I kind of get, you know, I've done so much, I've done it for three years. So I, July is my third year doing the show. And, you know, I did it for once a week for the first year and a month. And then I did it. I've been doing it two times a week since for the last two years mm-hmm. or more. So um, I like being outside right now. So it's kind of like a transition with grilling and cooking outside. Um, unless I can't, obviously, whether or not, if I'm not there at the time. Um, otherwise, like, you know, this new show is about building people a home bar. You know, like, I, I want to – if I can have a cooking show, I can have any kind of show because I don't know how to cook. I didn't know how to do that. Exactly. So, <laughs> I mean, that makes sense. So, I mean, I did, I mean, I know how to make some things, but I'm not, like, a fucking trained chef or anything. So, that means if I want to have a building show, if I want to build shit, then I can have that. I just have to have somebody that knows what they're doing. And if, if, if the episode is <laughs> selling to Home Depot or, no, you know, or, or Labatt Blue, then – we can afford to have a contractor come and build the shit while I just hang out and talk shit and hammer here and there, you know? Exactly. It's and that's what it really is. Whatever happens, like, I can't really call it. You know, I'm just going to, um, you know, stand-up's always, a, always never going to go anywhere. I, you know, I, I continue writing on a regular basis and obviously can't do much performing right now. But luckily I work at Barstool so I can continue to write without having to worry about getting paid comedy because I, I, I have a job, so. Mm-hmm. Whatever kind of happens, you know, like, I don't really know. I mean, I want to have a special one eventually for stand-up. And, um, you know, I mean, I would like to, you know, somehow Barstool transitions to television or Netflix or some type of shit. Or, you know, because I could – who knows? Barstool's teaming up with everybody, buying up everything. Right. I, you know, Barstool might have a fucking slot on Netflix before uh, it's over. Like, so big- I don't know. I just want to keep on making money just cooking and eating and drinking and talking shit. Really, that's my main goal. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So sticking with Barstool, uh, so how did you get involved with Barstool and what's the atmosphere like working for them and like what are your colleagues like? Yeah. Um, everybody's a lot of different personalities there. Some people are friendlier than others. Okay. But overall, it's just a basic, you know, professionalism and, uh, you know, I, I don't really get involved. I try to, I'm not a big arguer guy. So I know a lot of people like to go at each other there. Uh, you know, I'm, that's not really my thing. That's why I'm not a good arguer. I'm a really good friend or I fight or we fight. Like there's yeah. no real... I'm not here to argue with people. I don't like I, – and I understand that's the culture in the office and that's what happens. Right. But, like, Dave, if you're just talking to Dave, he's not arguing with you. He's cool as shit, you know? Yeah, of course. Um, but I got a job there working because I, I work with Pat McAfee. And when Pat got hired, he brought me on in his office. And then my show started selling ads. So when he went off on his own, I stayed with Barstool because they had sold my show. And they were giving me, um, they were giving me the salary and insurance and shit. So – yeah, you know, cool. like I still talk to Pat on a regular basis. He's cool as shit. Yeah, uh, I love what he does. But um, you know, I just he just sent me off on my own. You know, uh-huh. it's so dope. Um, speaking about fighting people, I hate to bring this up, but it's got to come. Roll the clip, Corey. Roll the clip. <laughs> Your fight with Smitty. I actually watched it. You put his ass down a couple times in the early rounds. He, I honestly, I only feel like he landed one really, really solid punch. But yeah. obviously, came down to decision. It picks Smitty. I mean, I thought it could have gone either way, obviously. But I want to know what you would have done differently for the fight. Well, I'll tell you what. You can do anything differently because the very – like, I sparred a shitload. Like, I have way more yeah. – like, if I fought Smitty again, I would beat his ass. I think he knows that. <laughs> You're in here first. But, I mean, listen, that doesn't mean that he's not strong as fuck. He has a huge set of balls. Yeah. He hits hard. You know, uh, he's younger, faster, stronger than I am. But I – but – the thing about fighting is like you could spar right all you want. Like you can go to a boxing class and I went to, you know, I sparred and trained with, uh, you know, an MMA legend. Luckily I just got lucky and I ended up becoming really good friends with Chris Lytle. 
Wow, that's crazy. And, uh, and you know, you want to watch some, some wars, Go just Google Chris Lytle uh, UFC fights, and it's, he goes to battle. But he's an absolute master. He's one of the best jujitsu fighters in the world. Um, and he's just a great guy. And I started training with him just for fun. Like so, fun? What's that? Like, were you training one on one with this guy? Yeah, yeah. We would go out because uh, in Indiana, in Indianapolis, there's a gym there where all the pros hang out and train in the mornings. Okay. Um, so, but everybody else, they have regular classes and shit later on in the day for the people like that I should normally would have gotten in. But since I had, I met him through comedy, he'd invite, we got, we got drunk together one night. We he invited me to come train with him anytime I wanted. Yeah. So I started going like two, three days a week, every week, four times a week. Dang. And, um, you spar a lot. Like, and you spar for real in there. Like, they're not, these guys are real. They don't, yeah, fuck they don't around. Talk like, around. Yeah. you know, you're really getting hit and you're fighting, you're learning how to fight. And, uh, but once you fight in front of a crowd of people, yeah, all that shit went out the window. Like, your adrenaline and your mind just goes bonkers. Like, and you just fight like you've never fought before. You're just throwing, like, you know, it's kind of like that, that fight or flight, that, what's it, flight, the fight or flight fucking feeling in a human. Oh, yeah. Genetic yeah. coding. So you just, like, you know, you just, you lose all your, your, your intelligence. Yeah. So, but the second fight was a different ball game because now I have the experience. Of right. course. But, you know, I did knock Smitty down. They didn't, but here's a good thing. I knocked him down. I got some good-ass shots on him. So a lot of people thought I won. So luckily on social media, a lot of times, outside of not winning the money, people give you more credit because they think you got robbed and you did well. Yeah. So it ended up doing good. Like, either way, like, you know, I, I, I laid him out once. They didn't count it. He laid me out clean. They counted it. Um, he, he got me some shots. He's a, it was a good fight, man. I, I was a real eye opener because I, I mean, before going into that fight, I'm like, I'm gonna fuck this dude up because yeah. he never, he never trained at my level, not even close to sparring the amount of hours I have. So yeah, but it didn't matter. I mean, I still had that clean shot. I went down. When you, when you, if you've never been in a fight before, then uh, especially with a hundred thousand people watching, then you everything changes. Right. Yeah, it makes sense. So why'd you go with Country Road for the intro song? Phenomenal choice. By oh the yeah, way. great choice. Yeah. Classic. That was Pat. That was a Pat call all day. <laughs> oh, of course. Because Pat went to West Virginia. You know, he went to WVU. So uh, he was like, "No, there's only one song you need to come out to, and that's Country Road." And right. I was like, "All right, well, you know, in the in the, in the man I trust. I mean, you yeah. gotta trust whatever Pat McAfee does. He becomes gold. So you know, you gotta listen to the guy when he's mentoring you. You right. know, and that's what I did, and um, and it worked out great. I mean, it was a great intro. <laughs> yeah, legendary. Well, all right, now we can talk about the win against Matt, who is the fake comedian. Right? Yeah. Right. Got a hat. How, how was it to just knock his silly ass out? Like, fucking oh, put him man. on the net. <laughs> how was that feeling? You know, I have a buddy that I had, a really good friend of mine that I met through that gym with Lytle, you know, and uh, this guy's a great guy. He's an Indiana hillbilly, and he, he fought MMA for a while, you know, underground shit, but he still fought a lot of fights. Yeah. And he's always say, listen, I don't care how funny you think you are and how good you kill when we're at comedy clubs, but when you knock somebody out in front of a ton of people, oh, yeah. nothing fucks with that. Nothing. And uh, when I did it, I couldn't believe it. And, and I just, the greatest feeling of it in history. Like if I, I mean, it's a feeling that you just can't fuck with. <laughs> of course. It just felt unbelievable. And I had like, I, you know, I got lucky that I became friends with Luke Rockhold, who's a really, you know, uh, you know, former middleweight UFC champion of the world. Wow. Uh, light heavyweight champion, I think. Yeah. And he's my corner, man. You know, I'm over here hugging him. Like, <laughs> this isn't real life. Like, I'm just some fat 40-year-old. Like, what's going on here, dude? My honor, chef? You must, you must have gone out after that victory. Please tell me you uh, did. My lady was there. Yeah, we had a good time that night, yeah. man. We, uh, we had a great night that night. Yeah. It was just, it was just, it was all pretty surreal. Like, yeah. you know, the adrenaline rush, and then all of a sudden it goes my way. And, but that was all training. You know, that's just the right. training coming together. Like, I wasn't like, okay, now I'm going to throw, a, you know, I missed this punch. I'll throw this one. You just go through the motions from training and you get there. And I'm still a fucking cub compared to these guys. But on that day against that guy, you know, it was my luckily I got lucky. Yeah. All right. So obviously you're here drinking a high noon. We love that. We love because our next segment is our JV varsity segment, Shots with Sean. So what JV varsity means is obviously you don't want to be on fucking JV. That means it's your, like, least favorite. And varsity, you always want to be varsity in the sport. That's your favorite. Okay? Makes sense? Okay. Wait, wait. Say that again. How does it work? So your JV will be your least favorite, and your varsity will be your favorite. Pretty much. Okay. 
Yeah, so we're just so we're like start off, topics. Give us your varsity beer. What is your favorite beer? <sighs> I'm going to say Labatt Blue. Wow. wow. Give, all right, what's a JV beer? You know what? Some of the Chicago boys are going to hate me for this, but uh, I just can't fuck with Miller Lite, dude. Wow. All right. 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 The I grew up on Bud Light. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I grew up on Bud Light. It was growing up in my you know, late 90s. It was Bud Light, Coors Light, Miller Light, my neighborhood. Now, depending on what school you went to, where you went, whatever your dad, whatever their dads were drinking, you know, like that's basically yeah. what team you get on. And I just could never get on board with, with uh, Miller Light. That's fair. I mean, to Give us. You a headache. Yeah, to us, it's always wrong the season, to be honest. It's right. always, always wrong the season. season. Yeah, you know what? I, I, I mean, obviously, I say Labatt Blue because they pay for my fucking <laughs> my life. But yeah. I love Corona. Bro, Corona's my go-to. Go-to. At least for before I got this job and before a, a big company started buying my show, Corona's been my, was my right. go-to. Yeah, definitely varsity. So, next one. Give us your varsity hard liquor. Uh, I'm going to go right now. I mean, it's either – well, it's, it has to be two because you have to have a whiskey. So I've been going um, okay. with the bullet bourbon and then uh, with, with, with vodka, you know, whether it is, a, you know, vodka to me, as long as it's triple distilled, bro, it doesn't matter what they label. But I'll drink, I buy New Amsterdam because of work and I buy Tito's. <laughs> oh my God. Not but not. you drink All New right. Amsterdam and vodka, bro, whatever. All right. So All right. Let's hit a JV. Yeah. The JV hard liquor. JV hard liquor, I'm going to go rum just because it's too sweet, dude. It's like, that's what you drink and that's what, you know, when you're like baby steps, you know. It's like, all right, man, you're almost there. You're, you're a yellow belt, kid. Yeah. Here's a fucking rum and coke. <laughs> you know, I, I, went through a, I went through a Captain Morgan phase and I went, okay. but it's just too sweet and uh, I can't sit around and drink 47 Cokes all night, but I can drink 47 <laughs> glasses of vodka soda or, yeah. you know, 12, 12 glasses of whiskey on the rocks for sure. Of course. That's of course. fair. All right, so this is – Probably my favorite question of the shots with Sean. Give us, you toured the world, give us your varsity city to get fucked up in, in the U.S. Damn, that's a tough one. Yeah. Nashville's up there. All right. Okay. Um, Nashville for sure. Houston's pretty goes pretty hard, but uh, uh, New Orleans. New Orleans. Of New Orleans goes big. Chicago, big. Nice. Chicago, I mean, Chicago. there's a ton of cities, bro, that go ham. Missoula, Montana. Really? <laughs> yeah, man. We went, we went ham there. All right. Uh, Vegas sometimes. Like, sometimes it's overrated, you know. Yeah. And, you know, you don't really get the experience that you had hype up on the way there. Yeah. The problem is the hype. But I'd have to say problem. Vegas is my JB, bro. Wow. Vegas is your J because of the hype? Is that what you're saying? Have you I think so. Everybody's in their cars like, we're going to fuck Vegas up. I might not even go <laughs> home. You're like, dude, you got 150 bucks to your name. You're not going that hard, dude. You're going to be hanging out the penny slots, waiting for the lady to come by. Maybe you get a fucking Bud Light. Yeah. But, you know, if you got, if you're balanced, you know, if you got the right cash flow and you, and you know what you're doing and you've been there before, if you have the ability to, like, pop off bottles and you got a bankroll of, then sit around yeah. and play craps and get lit on. Right. Then we're talking. Like, you know, if you got a nice little knot and you can play some craps and you can drink, take shots, and you know, you're drinking at the same time while you're playing and not lose all your money and it matter. Then it's a vibe. Yeah, but like New Orleans, I mean, I don't know about now. It's a little bit different now, but yeah, you know, over the last course of the last ten years, it's kind of gone. I in the last time I was there, I was like, Jesus, this is whack now. But. <laughs> But I'm telling you, I've had some amazing times there. But you can't go on no, uh, Mardi Gras. You can't go there. That's rookie weekend. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that was the U.S. cities to get fucked up in. Now yeah. the big time. Let's go internationally. You don't have to do city. Uh, you can just do countries if, if needed. But what's your varsity country? Oh, uh, man. Um, I'll tell you what. Australia was off the hook. Okay. They get loaded down there. They're having a good time. <laughs> All right. The, uh, the U.K., we're getting hammered there. Um, <laughs> like Belgium was Belgium was fun as shit too. Okay. Um, Christiana, what city was I in? It was, I mean, what's country it was not Belgium? It was. I'll think in a minute, but there's there's a city in this in this country that we went to. I'll, I'll remember this uh, this country in a minute. But uh, there's a little there's an old World War II base there that that's where they they want you to go do all your drugs and party. <laughs> so it's called. Like, Google Christiana. Ask someone to Google that real quick and what country is it in. 
Yeah, Christiana. Right. It's just a, it's a, um, it's basically they, they, they send Denmark, you there, right? Denmark. Where? Denmark. Copenhagen. Yes, Denmark. Denmark. There we That's go. It. There we go. Yeah. And you go in there and it's really, they got big signs, no cameras, no nothing. And you walk in, it's just an old World War II, like bunker thing. And they got like, this is the first time, this is, that place is kind of like what everybody thinks Amsterdam was going to be when they got there, right? Okay, yeah. Because when you go to Amsterdam, it's laid back as shit. People like, are no, chill, no, man. No loss. You know, even the red light district is fucking just chill. It's not like a, it's not like Mardi Gras by a long, it's not like New Orleans. But Christiana, you go in there, they got like hash rocks, they got stocks of weed, and they got like little booths and shit. And oh my you know, God. they have like, instead of a food stand, it's a guy selling stocks of weed and pipe <laughs> and, and, and hash. And, you go into a bar, people are like sleeping on the floor. You're it's walking crazy. over fools that are hammered, and you know they their dollars and their two dollars are like coins. So you're buying fucking beers with with coins, and and you know you're you're stoned out of your mind, and it's just it's just kind of like a Star Wars bar a little bit, but not as wild. But it, that was a pretty wild place to get hammered. But also Norway and sweet uh, Norway, dude. We walked into a bar one time on the tour. I don't even remember what country, what city we were in. And the, the rugby team in that city had just won the championship or some shit. Oh, that's going nice. crazy. Hold on one second. Hold on. Okay. So we're going to take this time while Sean is uh, getting ready. We're going to shout out our quick sponsor, which we actually don't have any right now. Okay. But Sean. Sean. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Now that you're back. Quick intermission, obviously. We wanted to shout out our sponsor. We don't have any. We're looking for a sponsor, <laughs> which means your turn. Fucking promote whatever you want right now. Go for it. Hit us. Um, you know what? Um, just, I guess, go watch my show. Uh, uh, my otherwise, God. Long Beach, no, Long Beach Jerky Company. Long Beach Jerky, Jerky, Jerky Company. Long Great Beach, beef jerky, bro. They got good-ass shirts. <laughs> uh, but the, the, the spicy teriyaki is unbelievable. The cracked pepper is great. Yeah. The buffalo wing is unbelievable. They only got four flavors. But okay. the shit is delicious. You heard it here first. Uh, so we're going to get back to the JV Varsity. You gave us our varsity. Oh, yeah. Loved it. And yeah. internationally, JV, what, what's one place that you were just like, that was not fucking fun at all? If any. Um, you know, Amsterdam was really chill. I, I don't want to call it JV because I didn't spend enough time there. But it was, it was pretty chill, uh, you know, compared to most places. Like England, they're going ham. You know, uh, those places were going. Oh, Nottingham was crazy, uh, but uh, from when I was there, you know, I guess for this sake of the for the segment, I have to I have to say Amsterdam because you just go into a cafe and you get stoned and shit, but it's pretty relaxing. Like you ain't chilling, you ain't going bonkers. You know, it's more yeah. of a stoner sesh than it is a get dumb sesh. Like like when I was in Norway, I walked into that bar, and they're all singing their song. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it was, right? But the whole yeah. bar is jumping up and down in unison. And they weren't, like, spread out. Like, they were packed in. You know, everybody was touching. And you just walk into this bar, and you're just like, hey, hey, hey. You're, just, you're automatically just jumping up and down. Yeah, yeah, So I, we ended up, yeah, it was. And we got the kind of the royal treatment because the guy who owned it, nice. you know, his, like, 35-year-old son was hanging out with us because he was at the show. It was a fluffy show. Yeah, Norway and Sweden are off the hook. They're getting hammered up there. Of course. So obviously you're the $20 chef. So we got to ask, what's your varsity drunk food? Varsity drunk food is going to be street tacos all day, every day. Any wow. particular place? Good call. Or homemade. Um, you know what? The streets of LA, man, you just got to know. Oh, Phoenix yeah. has some spots too. Um, but California, you know, general San Diego, if you go, you know, the, even San Francisco, like they, 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 Mexicans got it locked down with the taco stands. No matter if it's downtown L.A. when you walk out of a strip club or if it's um, – which the only one you should ever go to in L.A. is Sam's Off Rocks because it was in some movies and because it's just – it's gangster's paradise in there. And it's just visually you're just like, what's going on, bro? Fair. <laughs> but it's not – but but it's not like – I don't know. It's more of a TV kind of feel in there. It just doesn't even make sense. It's just gangsters with yeah. 18 on their face just throwing <laughs> money and slapping you. The biggest ass you've ever seen in your life. You're just like, wow, this is – this is insanity, bro. But it's the experience. Um, sure. Yeah, outside of bars, a lot of times it's gonna be the taco guy. And if you know, in the right mood, you might have to slide in a bacon wrap hot dog. All right, uh, JV drunk food, and obviously there are some gross ass foods. So like, that's not what we're talking. We're talking like 
what other people regard as, oh, you should have this when you're fucking hammered, but it, you, it just doesn't hit the spot for you. Taco Bell. Really? Like, ah, I, listen, I'll there. eat it. I'll eat it. I'll, I'll eat taco. I'll, I'll order 10 crispy right now. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll get 10 packs of the fucking well, sauce. Hot sauce. But, yeah. but what I'm saying is at the end of the day, when you look at it, the quality of eating a, a good-ass skirt steak taco, this Mexican homie just whipped up hot, piping hot, and you got free radishes and all the sauces you can eat. Oh, yeah. And then you go, or, or you get this fucking, you know, this bologna style seasoned meat oh. wrapped up in a, tor- in a crispy ass taco that every year they get less and less meat on it, less and less everything, and it just becomes a fucking shit taco. Now, I'll still smash them, but I'm just saying it's JV level action compared to a good, yeah. you know, smacking down seven tacos at a taco stand. Of course, fair. Our last question in this segment, shout to Sean. My last question is, what, who is the best barstool worker to go out and hit the bars with? A varsity barstool worker to hit the bars with. You know, I, I, I don't really go out drinking too much with people from the office. I, okay. I usually, I'm usually chilling with my lady, or I just, when I moved to New York, you know, I, I just had to kind of like, you know, not really focus. I've been drinking my whole life. I had to come here and get work done, you know? Yeah, fair. So I don't really party very much in the city. Okay. But I, I've, I've done some drinking with Donnie Does. That's my guy. All right. Sweet. So I've done, I've done some drinking with KB a little bit. He's fucking right. funny. Yeah. And you can't, and Large, too. Large and Willie all day. Uh-huh. Yeah, Large Willie, Gay Pat, uh, <laughs> um, KB, and Donnie Does. I have to, I'd have to, that'd have to be my team right there. Nice. Um, crew. Good, crew. Good crew. Good crew. I just, because I've also never drank with most of the other people there, so. Okay. Yeah. So I'm assuming you yeah. don't have a JV yeah. Barstool worker because, like, you haven't – there's no, like, a no, – is there, like, a known around the office, like, don't be with him when he's drunk. He's just a nuisance. No, I, I honestly, I don't drink with everybody enough to know that. I mean, I hear shit here and there, you know, uh, people throwing up or whatever. But, you know, I don't I, – I, I can't really say because I just don't have enough experience getting lit with fools in the office. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. Sean, that was a great segment, JV Varsity. We know you gamble, and on this show, we on our gambling podcast, we have expert. a gambling expert that we like to okay. call. It's our own segment. His name's Cookie. We're going into Cookie's Corner. Oh. We're going to bring him on right now. We're going to talk some gambling. All right. Get over here, Cookie. <laughs> <laughs> what up, Sean? How are we doing, brother? What's up, buddy? Good, bro. Pretty good, my man. Well, you're the um, expert? Yeah, I'm a fucking expert, man. I, I, I've been doing it for a while. Um, <laughs> like since he was like four years old. He's yeah, just calling dude, straight up. Um, Born and Fade raised. Michigan. Born and raised. Raised. Sorry, Fade Michigan. Um, so my first question is, um, I, I just need to know how often do you bet? Do you do, uh, do you bet often or not? Right now? I do now. The last uh, since the last since I moved to New York, I fought it off for about. A little over, maybe a little around a year, but I've been going ham for about the last year. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's an addiction. You know, mostly, you know, UFC. I got started getting done with it right before the pandemic. Like, I was just, <laughs> I would just be in my app, and I'm like, yeah, I guess I'll bet on fucking Iran going heads up against the Saudi Arabian basketball team. Yeah, <laughs> like just getting stupid live yeah, betting. You know, you watch those basketball games; they're literally playing on a pickup court. They, they stream yeah, them. Yeah. they're so funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I've done some weird shit. Mostly weird basketball betting, but. If I'm getting the itch, if I'm up, if I'm on a run. Yeah, I feel you. Um, and UFC also. UFC's been hyped, just yeah. um, what's the What's the most you've ever tossed on a bet? A thousand a bucks. A thousand bucks? I'm what, what yeah, was I was sweating bet? my nuts off, dude. <laughs> what, was <laughs> what, yeah, what, was the, what was the bet? Uh, it was the, I think it was like the fourth of – I feel like it was the fourth game of the World Series last year the Astros won. They had lost a couple, and I was just like, there's no way they're going to lose again. Yeah. And I was down like 700. So I was like, oh, oh shit, hey. dude. <laughs> so I just let it fly and they won, thank God. Good shit, yeah, thank God. <laughs> um, and so going off that great, great win, is there any bad beats that you remember? Uh, just so I started getting in, I started doing the, uh, this last season, I started betting a lot of NBA. Yeah. So oh, just the way that the swings happened at the end. On the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Without, you know, not covering the spread or – or fucking out of nowhere covering. Yeah, no, the, just, the, 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 the I, I, I can't remember exactly which one it was, but I definitely had like a little string of just taking smacks in the mouth there on trying to bet NBA. Live bet it to the last second, you know. <laughs> oh, the live betting, it changes like every second, so it's crazy. That can kill a man. Yeah. Yeah. Um so 
During the quarantine, I know you said you started gambling a lot recently. During the quarantine, have you been betting on UFC, any other sports? I bet UFC, that was it really. The last time I bet was on the uh, the Francis fight when he knocked homeboy out in like 30 seconds or whatever. Yeah. Oh, all right. um, yeah, I won a few hundred bucks on that. I was like, there's no way this guy. I bet on that. I bet it wouldn't go to the third. I think I yeah. bet that it was going to be a knockout. Oh, wow. wow, so you should trip around right there. <laughs> yeah, so I won like four or 500 bucks and I haven't bet since. There we go. Shit. So are, are, you, are you saving up for UFC 251? You see that fight card? Uh, that's, the, that's the Gilbert Burns and uh, – Usman, Volkan. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm going to go Usman all day, though, man. Usman, I feel like, oh, yeah. uh, you know, I feel like that guy is like a wall, dude. You just can't fuck with him right now. Dude, he's not going to get fucked with. He took punishment the last fight. He still took it to the face and yeah. kept delivering, just dropping bombs. Yeah. That he's, guy's got a chip on his shoulder, dude. These guys are crazy. <laughs> these guys are built different. Yeah, they're just uh, – no, the guys I even trained with, like, the guy would let me punch him in the face. Like, come on, give me a good shot. And, like, I'm hitting him with – he's like, no, come on now. And I'll be like, wham! As long as like, Kenny goes, there you go. You're getting better. You're like, yeah, Jesus. Give me one more. <laughs> just some people are just built different, dude. Nah, nah. They're, they're, those people are crazy. I mean, they go in a ring and they just fight it out for 25 minutes. That's absurd to me. Um, yeah, but, yeah, I bet I do, I do my fair share of betting now. I mean, I'm not like a betting yeah. content guy. I just bet because I like betting. And Yeah. You work for Barstool. You have to bet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway, I watch what Prez is doing and a lot of college battles, doing a lot of college basketball. I like to fade Marty Mush. That's the, that's my thing. Yeah, you know what? I will do that sometimes. When I see him doing like, oh, I'm bad. When he's like, oh, this is the one that's going to get me out of this, out of my slump. Yeah, I'm no, like, you know there's a follow-up video coming. Like, oh, fuck. Right? I'm not yeah, I'm like, oh, let's have her. Let's have her. Whoever he's not betting on. Exactly. That's the move. That's that's the move, honestly. Um, so this is a question. I, I actually um, – I have a big opinion on this question. But what, when you're watching a sport that you gambled on, would you rather watch a drunk or high? Probably, probably both. I mean, because once the money's on the line, if you got, you know, if it's five hundred dollars coming down to the line, yeah, and you really don't want to lose that money, dude. Yeah, I don't. I don't you know, like it's, drunk because. I, yeah, I think you know. Yeah, I think maybe get being a little bit buzzed it makes it a little bit more fun. Yeah, for sure, I agree. Um, and when you're chilling with the boys, it's a personal question. And you're smoking weed. What are you smoking? Bong joints, blunts. What are you rolling up? Uh, I, I've gone through phases throughout my 20-year career. Ooh, let's hear I'll be 40, I'm going to be 42 in November. Oh, you don't so, look 42. You look young. Yeah. Hey, that's why you can't smoke cigarettes and stuff. And then stop heavily drinking whiskey after, like, 30 because you just right. drink it, like, casually at home, you know? Yeah. Right. Don't be at the bar. You got to go vodka and shit and beers. Yeah. But, uh, um, what was the question? Oh, yeah, weed. Okay, so to smoke I used to go, you know, I, I went through the you know, gravity bong stage, the big bong okay. stage, the blunt like stage. Years right there. <laughs> I got a little tiny bonger and I got a little pipe. Yes, All right. sir. All right. Always on hand. Always handy. Yeah, and then I got, you know, I, I'm a great joint roller. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I'll take some puffs yeah. off a joint by myself and just put it out. I don't need to, like, yeah, same you, know, thing. For, you know, there's points in your life when you smoke weed or you just think, you know, the more you smoke, the more you're like, let's smoke more. No. But then you get older and you're like, dude, I take a few rips. I'm good to go until three or four. No, yeah, you got to plan it out accordingly. It's got to be like three hours, four hour breaks in between. You know? Yeah, you know, you just – or, I mean, that's just – some days it's not. Some days I'll sit here, you know, and smoke maybe five bowls. But, yeah, but yeah. The, depending on how busy I am, what I'm up to, you know, maybe hit rip a bowl, go, yeah, go handle my day, get back, rip a bowl, go do some shit. And then I get home with a bowl or something like that. But for the most part, I got a little bong here. I'll rip sometimes. But otherwise, it's joints. I'm just a little buddy. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. That's a vibe. Um, so I'm going to take it to my pick of the day, Cookies Corner's pick. So right now, we're 7-5. and five. Okay. Um, we've been betting a lot of Premier League, table tennis, uh, the KBO I love, <laughs> the Lotte Giants. Lotte Giants, are, they're, they're giving us – Buzzer Hitters Hall of Fame right making there. some money. That's, um, the, the, Giants, the Giants are the, the squad right now? Yeah, they're, they're amazing, bro. Trust me. Okay. Um, so tomorrow we're going to the Premier League. We got a big game: Chelsea versus Man City. Man City. His team is oh, Chelsea. Man City. Chelsea. Chelsea. Go Chelsea. Um, so I'm taking Chelsea plus a half, and that's at plus 103. And I'm tossing one unit on that. I like that pick a lot. I think it's gonna be a really okay. good game. I can see it ending one one. Um, so let's get after it tomorrow. Chelsea plus a half. I'm gonna bet that tonight. Yeah. Take it. it might tomorrow. Even be it's gonna be a good game. Really good game. Yeah, both really good teams. Don't forget to tweet at us when you make when you make your exactly. Money. <laughs> All right, just DM me so I know what your account is. 
Yes, sir. Of course, sir. of course. All right, that's all for Cookie's Corner. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate all your advice and all your uh, fun stories. We're going to go back to Ben and Shell. Peace out, brother. Later, buddy. Let's do it. All right, Sean. First off, you said you were 42. With that beard, honestly, you don't look a day over 24. And that ponytail, too. We haven't even talked about I'd that. I'd be fucking shocked. You said you were 25. <laughs> what? Are you just taking a quick rip right there? <laughs> no, I just I, got, I cough sometimes. All right. Okay. All right. Next segment we'll go into. Another segment. We'll I went through your Twitter. You tweet a, a fuck ton, to be honest. But there are some tweets that need a little more explanation without context. So we're going to go into explain that tweet, okay? Okay. First tweet. Why do, none, why do non-flushable wipes even exist? Who's wiping their ass and tossing that in the trash? Where, where, where does that come from? Well, um, if you've been to Mexico ever, I've been to Mexico about 600 times. Okay. Um, if the, or in other countries as well. If the plumbing isn't great, you're not allowed to um, flush the toilet paper. So when they wipe their ass, they throw it in the trash can next to it. Wow. Uh, so you can roll into a bathroom and there's just like people's ass wipe paper right there. Um, but also, uh, read the tweet again. Uh, why do non-flushable wipes even exist? Oh, yes, Wiping yes. Your okay. ass and tossing that in the trash. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Like, you can't be throwing. I, I just know from being in countries, like, no one wants to walk into your bathroom and see paper that you wiped your ass with in the trash, like, right yeah. there. That's, that's, that's not how shit should operate unless you're, like, camping or something. Then you can still throw it in a fucking – in the fire or something. And before you dig a hole or something, you leave a little surprise yeah. for the next person. Yeah, I um. So it just you know it's just like what what's the, what what are we doing here? Like all you're doing is making me fuck up my plumbing, because if you flush of too many non-flushables, your shit starts to fuck up. Yeah, For sure. Yeah. So all they're doing is give making us run errands, going to buy Drano, you know, maybe having to call a plumber, doing some yeah. snake bullshit, Absolutely. having a, a maybe a, a nasty fucking overflow. Like they, it's just they they're just not right. That they're gonna outlaw. You know, something I say they should go with non flushable wipes for sure. Get rid of those. Mm -hmm. All right, next tweet. Damn, I want to fly around in this FedEx cardboard box shuttle so bad. Give us your oh, thoughts. That, that was a commercial. I okay. was watching TV. It was like a fucking kid in this cardboard box, and they were hauling ass together in these cardboard <laughs> box spaceships, dude. And I was just like, man, I really would like to roll around in that Fed. It was during this major sporting event, too. So some people got it because it was in the moment. Yeah. But a lot of people just like, what the fuck does this even mean? That's why. Yeah, of course. Yeah. All right, next tweet. We're going back all the way to 2012. Our favorite oh, tweet. Oh, shit. I don't want a 401k when I'm old. I just want the ability to kick ass like Sam Elliott did in Roadhouse. That's, that, <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> truth. I mean, it's, it's a better feeling, I guess. I, I'm never going to stop working, so yeah. I don't have to rely on money. That just, I mean, that's a pretty stupid financial talk, you know, sentence I'm saying there. But. Yeah. I mean, come on. You ever watch Roadhouse? Yeah, I mean, if you could kick ass, like, I mean, I would. I, I stand with you. I'll give away my 401k right now. Dude, fucking Sam Elliott with the, with the busted knee, one arm, fighting the dude that Patrick Swayze <laughs> kills at the end. I mean, Sam Elliott's my, one of my fucking favorites. Yeah. All right, last tweet. We, we got to know, did you hit your lady with that Dave Portnoy move last? The, the <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, she, she loved did. that tweet. Did you actually go for it? Is our question. You got you to go for that move. You know what? I think you, if you do it out the gate, you're just fucking stunting. But if you're in a relationship and you pull that off, like, I, you know, out of out of pure comedy, because you you know you both know that that's what Dave did. Yeah. Then it's just like that hilarious shit that happens in relationships. Of course. Where it's like just you and you're like you're just doing shit that could considerably not be considered sexy but funny during sex. That's when you're like in a very comfortable relationship. Yes. Oh yeah, I had I had to pull the old fucking I had to pull the old Bagwell out for old for old Davy in honor of old Davy fucking old Bagwell. Davey. I'll probably have to be able to read that. But hold on. So in this tweet we didn't read the last part of it. Yeah, me. hold on. You said you hit the Dave Portnoy move, but you cramped up. Is this facts? And or is this just the cramp? comedy side of you just saying I cramped up? <laughs> nah, I just kidding, bro. But I you know what I would have cramped up, I would have caught that fucking behind that right leg, you know? <laughs> That fucking hamstring. That's what. That's what it got. That's what it got tied up real clean. Uh, real clean and easy right there. Yeah. All right, Sean. We're coming to the conclusion of the show. But first off, there's a lot we didn't cover with you. 
we're gonna hit, we're gonna go into lightning level. So what this means is it's like lightning and thunder. We're gonna ask you sporadic questions, like lightning, goes everywhere. You never know where the question's gonna come from. You never know where lightning's gonna hit, dude. Yeah, sometimes thunder makes a fucking statement. So these questions, maybe you wanna have a longer answer, but sometimes it's just like a quick one and you just want a one word answer. Everything works, okay? Yep. All right. First question. Favorite Call of Duty multiplayer map? That's a tough one. Of all time? Of all, all time. time. And say what game it is from all time. Uh, one of my favorites all time was from Modern Warfare 2. It's when the one where you were like in the jungle. Uh, you know, you had like the rocky area where you would spawn in the back. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was that one high cliff where fools would get up on top of and drop a shield in front of so that you couldn't get up there. Remember that map? They had like the wooden huts and shit in it. Lucas, you remember that map? I'm on it. <laughs> we'll, we'll find out the name. But village. Village. Right. village. 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 Yeah, there, there we go. go. There we go. Uh, I love fucking sh – I love uh, – I love shoot, uh, shoot house. Yeah, it's fire. Um, I also, I obviously, you gotta love fucking Nuketown. That's Nuketown's the OG. There's nothing like it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and actually, they brought one back that I, I really enjoy playing now. It's the one they brought back. It's an old one with the crash helicopter where the where the hotel you can get on the third floor and fools just snipe from up there and shit. Crash. Maybe crash. It's yeah, maybe what. Crash. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That's one of my faves, too. All right, so sticking with Call of Duty, did you play Zombies? Um, you know what? Never really got into it. Like, right. I never fucked with the campaign. I mean, I did the beginning just to learn how to use the controller and shit. Yeah. But then once I felt like I had any kind of nuts, I just said I, I never played the campaign again. Mm -hmm. uh, I did play something the other day that's similar to, uh, um, to uh, Zombies, but it's like real people running up on you. And then they come in waves where there's more and more of them, and you got to go and buy shit real quick. You start pick up guns. It's it's some, it's some new shit, and um, it, it's in the new it's in the new fucking updates and shit. Warzone, like the War multiplayer shit. Warzone, it's like zombies, but it's dudes coming at you, and then they come in waves. So special. Uh, that's what our team's telling us right now. Yeah, special yeah. Ops. Sorry, uh, maybe that's what it is. I play. Oh, so one of my homies on on my on, that I'm friends with on PlayStation pulled it out of nowhere. I was like, all right, I'll play it. Yeah. Um. Question. This is obviously we said this was going to go all over the place. So here we go. How did you break your leg when you were little? No, I didn't break it. I had surgery. Uh, my I was in a my cousin. My, I have a wild ass cousin. The group of cousins that are all fuck ups. All right. <laughs> and uh, we were visiting them in Colorado where they lived at the time. I was probably like five or six, dude. And uh, I was on. I was. My mom let me go. I don't even know. If my mom let me go. I think I just went with my cousin. My cousin on the back of his dirt bike and. Uh, he somehow he crashed it and I went flying off and split my shit wide open on the sprinkler. So I mean, like my little leg, I, I still have a humongous, I had plastic surgery to close it. Wow. So, and I still have a humongous scar, like a fucking, on my fat ass leg, it's still huge. Um, from that, but that's, but yeah. So then I had that full cast on for a couple of months. Next question. Did you throw a strike at the Reds Cubs game when you threw out the first pitch? A little high, a little high and outside, uh -huh. dude. All right. But hey, it was definitely better than a lot of those fucks that are bouncing that shit off. Yeah, like, for sure. Fucking Carly Rae Jepsen or some shit. Oh, she <laughs> could. 50 cents. <laughs> or 50, yeah. Bad, yeah. Yeah, dude. We'll, we'll take a little hide outside. Yeah, I went yeah. all the way to the mound, too. Yeah. Nice. With the game, obviously, you threw the pitch at the Rebs Cubs game, and the game before, there was a bench-clearing brawl. Did you kind of wish that your first pitch would create some controversy? Create yeah. some controversy oh. some way where the Reds and the Cubs were just like, Sean just threw out that first pitch. Let's just go fucking fight each other. <laughs> yeah, that would have been nice to at least get some blows. I could throw some blows as a civilian, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I would have gone, I would have gone fucking Agreed. back to yeah. back with Tucker Barnhart, dude. Gone to war with that man. <laughs> exactly. Um, WrestleMania 29, what was your favorite match when you went? Was that the, the outside one in New York at the Jets yeah. Stadium? Outside one in New York. That would have been the Undertaker match. Oh, my. So he rolled out the fucking... Harley, like a boss. Baller. Nothing like a good Undertaker Baller. match. Um, you yeah, said you were... Gable got us a suite, dude. Wow. That's we took the tour bus there. We tailgated on the tour bus. <laughs> and we rolled up to our big-ass suite full of food and drinks and shit. That's the he way don't play around, bro. He's, he goes big. That's awesome. That's sick. But he does do something. He does, like, if he wants he makes a plan, it's on. Uh-huh. Uh, best late-night snack with a glass of whiskey. I know you drink a lot of whiskey late at night. What's the best snack that goes with it? 
compliments it. Um, you know, the other day I think I was busting out some pretzels and some Nutella. Okay. Can't go wrong there. Great combo. Uh, what, what was I drinking that night with that whiskey and that tweet? Did you guys, did you guys read that? Uh, one night you were eating Fritos. Okay. And Solid. I'm not sure about the other night. It was so I forgot. Yeah. Yeah, no, Fritos <laughs> always a go-to, you know, especially if you're a little bit actually hungry. It's, you know, it's more on the meal side than the snack side, you know? Yeah. Um, that and Doritos, I, I kind of feel like it's more in the – even though it's considered a snack, I feel like it's more of a – it can take the place of a meal better. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, something sweet a lot of times, like some kind of chocolate-ass, like Nutter Butters or some shit like that, Nutter Buddies, any of those shits they sell, like they're like a 99 cents for the box, you know, Little Debbie-type shits. You're on that. Those are always good. Also, watermelon Jolly Ranchers. Oh, so good. And peanut M and M's rock too. Ah, uh, nice. Good nice. call. Wait, nice. wait, finish that answer, off, finish. Sean. So I know you co-hosted the American Cornhole League Championships. Legend. Uh, you could talk about that a little, but before, obviously, that's one of the fan favorites when ESPN the Ocho comes on. Everyone loves yeah. watching it. But if you were to co-host another sport on ESPN the Ocho. What other sport would you be interested in co-hosting if you had the opportunity to pick any? I'll go darts all day. All right. <laughs> Those guys get pumped as fuck, dude. They get fired Those up. Those guys are like, he's the Mac and Roll with his ninth straight 20. <laughs> Triple 29 darts. Yeah. It's incredible. <sighs> you know, those European dudes, the way they announce shit is so, so nice. It's crazy. If that was your audition, that was awesome. Yeah, I agree. That Thanks. was great. And the players, before they throw the darts, they turn to the side, a little smelling salt action. They're like, let's go. <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, there, there's some serious soldiers in that sport. I, I would go there. I think I might go darts on the Ocho. Nice. All right. Uh, are you a fantasy football player? Oh, yeah, definitely. What's the best fantasy football team name you've ever had? Oh, man, I'd have to look, dude. I can't remember. Bro, I forget everything, bro. Sorry. Okay. Like, okay. I forget. I'd have to look at my phone. I just forgot. I forget, dude. I, I really can't remember. I've, I've played it fucking the last 15, whatever, 10 years at least. Yeah. And I just don't remember any of them. Okay. Uh, next question. Which, which Barstool workers would you want to see in a UFC dream match? Which two, if you could pick any two, to step in the octagon, which two would you pick? And you can't say yourself. Uh, okay. Okay. So are we saying that, that, that in a, this hypothetical situa situation, they're actually going to fight their ass off and not like just lay there like a punk? Like, they're yeah. going to fight until the, the death, almost. Like, high, like that's what you can think <laughs> in your mind. I'd like to see – I'd like to see either Kurt, Kurt Minahan and KFC or, or Smitty and Nate. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Both those matchups sound unbelievable, to be honest. That's – I'd like to see those two. Okay, okay. Let's say your team, you're, you're playing football. You're on the 40-yard line, fourth and 10. You need to pin the other team down and they're inside their own five-yard line. It's you or McAfee punting the ball. I saw an Instagram video of you punting. It seems like you might be the better punter. Who would you rather yeah. have in that situation? I'm going to go with me, dude. Listen, you want to <laughs> go with the consistency, you know what I mean? Of course. I'm not saying that he won't pin it down there. I just don't know if that he will, you know, yeah. so – I'm going to go with me. I know I got to trust my legs. Are tr it's trustable, dude. It's trustworthy, you know? You can bet on, you can bet on my parts. Of course. Uh, Ross discount or TJ Maxx? You know what? I'm going Ross because they keep it old school with the pricing. TJ Maxx has become way too expensive. Yeah. They're over, they're over to doing too much stuff. You know, they're turning in. They got the fucking home goods now. They've like extended, with new, which I like that store. But TJ Maxx. They're just starting to carry expensive shit. They're, 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 they're forgetting their roots that, that they're fucking TJ Maxx, you know? Huh. Ross, all day. Ross stays – Ross dressed for less, man. I'm telling you. That's, that, you know, you go in $20, you come out with, like, a nice pair of pants. Yeah. Maybe a pair of some nice socks, yeah. undies, a polo shirt, and you still got, like, eight bucks. Ross can hook you up on the budget. Honestly, I've, I've a huge Ross discount fan. A lot of my shirts and underwear come from Ross discount and socks. Huge for the program. TJ Maxx, I think the fame is getting to their head a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The socks especially, you just can't fuck with the socks at, at Ross. I mean, you're going to get a 10-pack for $9.99 or – I mean, you really can't fuck with that, dude. You buy, yeah. like, three packs, you're good for a month. You don't have to wear a, a fucking old sock for Never days. Never again. You, you get – so, you know. throw it out. 
if you wanted to. You could throw right the fuck away, dude. Exactly. Dollar a pair. All right, Popeyes or Chick Fil A? Popeyes all day. All and, day. And, but I'll say this: it's, they're both amazing. Like, yeah, it's, it, this is a forced question, so I would say exactly. both right away. Yeah. Um, but Popeyes. Do you think Popeyes has the edge? Because the gravy is just better than the Chick Fil A sauce. Because I know you're a huge Popeyes gravy. Yeah, yeah the gravy just sets it off to another level. Um, you know, the, obviously you can't really fuck with Polynesian sauce, but that's a sweet sauce. The yeah. spicy gravy, I, I always order an extra side of it, and I get it. You know, I'll get a number five. I'll get, I'll get a number seven. That's the five piece. You know, I'm gonna get the mashed potatoes with gravy, and then um, uh, fuck the biscuit because I'm trying not to get as fat as you know. I'm trying to get fat as slow don't as possible. Need the carbs. That's fair. I don't need the carbs. Biscuits, gr biscuits, gas though. Biscuits but then, uh, but then I just want to eat the. Uh, <laughs> I just give me a big fat side of that gravy so I can dip this shit in it, dude. Smother that chicken. All right. Yeah. You're at a bar. Would you rather be the bartender or the DJ? Bartender, without a doubt. Without a doubt? Wow. Do you have any? Not even, it's not even close, dude. Not even close. Have you ever bartended? Yeah, for well over, uh, almost 15 years. Wow. Any crazy I'll stories? tell you what, you're the fucking man. You, yeah, you know, the DJ's cool and all, but we're over there talking to everybody. I, you're the coolest yeah. dude around. Everybody wants to be your homie. You can do all types of dumb shit. You drink on the clock. You hook your friend, your friends up, and you know you do it in a fair manner, so no one's you know you're not stealing. And everybody's like your homie. Then you go to every other bar, and they all know you. You're their bartender. You're yeah. drinking for free. Yeah. So the DJ's cool and all. If you like, if you don't like, if you have no sense of urgency, like to bartend, because when it gets busy, you gotta like it has to be your top priority, or you're just, or you, or you can shit, you know, you just shit the bed. Yeah. So. uh but definitely, uh, all day, not even close, bartender. Of course. And our last question of Blaney Latham. You're a comedian. Hit us with your best one-liner ever. Uh, just a general one-liner. I don't really have one. The best thing I have is um, when I was single a long time ago, uh, I, my, my, I made this – I wrote this – I started saying this shit to chicks, like, in a funny way where I'd be like – she was on her phone. I'd be like, hey, did you get my text? And you say it kind of like funny, like you're asking for real. Like, hey, did you get my text? And then it's usually like an 80% positive feedback. You know, it's usually like a, uh, no, I did. I'm, oh, you know what? I don't know. My, my carrier's kind of slow. Let me see your phone. I'll just make sure. I'll be, you know, whatever. It's fine. Uh, wow. Like, I never even really God. did it. I never really did it to, like, actually hook up. It was just something funny I would do. Right. Yeah. And my, but my friends, I have, like, countless friends that, hey, did you get my text? Because what happens is 80% of the time, 70, 80% of the time, they're going to be like, it's like they'll, give, they'll acknowledge you like, that was a good one, you fucking bobo, right? Yeah. And then 10% um, of the time, they ignore it. Another, you know, and then 10% of the time, they're just like, they just give you a dirty look or something. But, uh, you know, but overall, because you're not directly asking them anything, like yeah. trying to meet them or something. So it's a little bit like it's like in a gray area it falls. You know, I just be like, hey, what's, did you get my text? <laughs> Uh, let me come here. Let me just make sure. I, my shit's slow. What's your number again? Let me talk. <laughs> what if it's the wrong number? Just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah. Like that type of shit, right? Like just being corny. Like you have, you don't, you're not really trying because you see dudes out there like, yo, let, you know, trying to like really be smooth with you. Like, dude, what are you doing? But if it works, hey, to all, to each his own, whatever works. Yeah. That's I mean, great. that's 200 IQ. Sean, today, this interview was absolutely phenomenal. Awesome. Thank you so much. For coming on our show shout out long island beef jerky is that what it was long beach it's long, long beach california beef, beef jerky. Shout, shout, out out long beach, long beach. Jerky. shout out buzzer heaters follow us on twitter at buzzer heaters instagram at buzzer heaters youtube as buzzer heaters we're the same everywhere everywhere this was the 20 dollar shop best rough and rowdy boxer of all time yes sir cornhole champ <laughs> we were where do you guys live oh uh, we live in chicago oh okay chicago guys this was Shell. This Bad was Dad. Thank you so much. Buzzer Heaters out. Later, fellas. The rest right. of your team also. You later on the rest of the team. Cookie and the boys over there. Yeah, yeah, the boys, yeah.